Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Moonbreakers. This is a new free-to-play game. I guess it's not new, but it's new on Steam. It's previously existed, I think it's like a plugin you can get for Google Chrome, which is a little bit weird. But anyway, free-to-play now out on Steam, and this is like a space dogfighting game. Almost you can think of it as like an objective-based shooter. But instead of having like a gun and being a dude in first person, you are a third person spaceship. And also there's objectives that you have to accomplish, like capture the flag or, you know, destroy the enemy's carrier. In a, in a way, it's kind of like, like a space version of Crimson Skies. And I actually, gameplay wise, absolutely no problem with this game whatsoever. I had about a little bit over an hour of playtime so far. And I was actually enjoying myself. Like there's problems with it, you'll see when we get into the game. But the real problem I have with it, and I think I've expressed this before, uh, is the kind of free-to-play model that they've gone with. I think you'll find, you know, if you look at most of my, my free-to-play videos, I kind of have a negative opinion of them, and largely that boils down to the business model. This game has one of the worst, like, free-to-play slash pay-to-win, and I do use that derisively for once, uh, models I've ever seen in a game. But first we'll play one, just so you can see what's going on, uh, and then I will talk about that a little bit later. So, one thing that's really weird is that you can't, like, join your friends in a match or invite them to a game. You just kind of have this quick match function. So we have a lot of ships here. You can see there's, like, five, eight, thirteen. So, like, eighteen ships, but we can only choose between two of them. We can only choose between the Mamba and the Rhino. So we'll take our light flight, or light fighter Mambo here. And I'm not really sure what game type this is right now, uh, but I'm just going to basically treat it as if it's Team Deathmatch. But there's also other modes, like I said, Capture the Flag is one of them. There is actually a Team Deathmatch mode, as well as a, uh, like, Destroy the Carrier mode. Those are the three that I've come across so far. But for now, I'm just going to try to get some kills and kind of show you the, uh, the way things work. So I'm piloting this spaceship. W, A, S, and D are kind of like roll, move forward, or move backwards. Uh, your throttle is mapped to your mouse wheel, so if I really wanted to slow down, I could use my mouse wheel and, you know, throttle down. And my uh, left mouse button is primary fire, which on this ship is like our machine gun here, or our tracer bullets or whatever. And our right mouse button is uh, torpedo, which we'll see if I ever encounter anybody else. Looks like there's some kind of dogfight going on over here. So I'm going to try to pick up some scraps and get some kills. You can see my health down there at the bottom. We also, ooh, oh, that was too close for comfort. I'm going to let those guys go and go after this guy in here. Oh, Torpedo actually landed, so I did get a kill there, and I think I blew up myself, yeah, because I basically just suicide crashed into him. Anyway, one last thing I want to talk about control-wise, also, uh, we control our ship not just with WASD, but also by moving our mouse, so we have total control in basically all directions, but as you can see, like, the animation looks a little bit wonky here, and indeed it is a little bit floaty when you're trying to control it, but it's definitely not the worst controlling uh, space shooter I've ever come across in my entire life. We also have afterburners, so with spacebar I can use a little bit of a boost. But for now, let's just try to get some kills. So, uh, based on our performance... Ooh, throttle way down. Got a kill there. Uh, based on our performance... It's not good. Uh, we will earn credits after each match. And these credits can be used to upgrade your ship. So, for example... Um, what can I do? I could upgrade... I have 8,000 cred. I could upgrade my engine to increase top speed. I could upgrade my boost. I could upgrade my booster fuel. Uh, I guess that gives me, like, longer duration boost. Boost recovery speed. Armor shield regeneration, missile fuel, etc, etc. I'm gonna boost up my, my shields to like three. Oh, upgrades must be bought in order, that sucks. Oh, you gotta buy one first, okay, I understand. Yes, I will upgrade my shields here. Take forever. Let's upgrade our second one as well. And I think I will have enough to upgrade the, oh, I don't have enough to upgrade the third one. Let's upgrade our top speed a little bit then too. Make my ship a little bit faster and a little bit more powerful. But other than that, I am out of credits. So as you can see, you upgrade your ship with credits that you get in-game. So now our ship is going to be a little bit faster and have a little bit more shield protection, which is fine. Looks like we got about 11 minutes left in this game. I'm just going to try to do some, as I said, basically hunt people down here. I do think, like, the, the space shooting part of this game... And in fact, the gameplay in general, it's not spectacular, but it's, it's fine. Like, I could see people getting, maybe not engrossed, but at least getting interested in this enough to play for uh, a couple of hours. Oh, that was not good. Maybe more than a couple of hours. I know some people are, are really into, into space shooters like this. This is not hyper-realistic by any stretch of the imagination, but, uh, you know, it's functional, definitely. And it is satisfying to, like, get behind someone, Top Gun style, and basically just hunt them down. I apologize if you have motion sickness and you're having trouble watching this video right now. Believe me, whenever I watch gameplay of a uh, space shooter, I have exactly the same problem. No hard feelings. 
Like, it's, it's satisfying to take someone down, as you saw right there. I get an assist on that. You can see my statistics not doing so hot. And I really kind of want to see this game through to the end. It looks like this is actually the destroy the carrier type game. Because both sides have like that HP bar and it is going nowhere. Because it looks like everyone's doing what I'm doing and just focusing on Team Deathmatch. Okay, I'm seriously going to throw up. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Now let's switch it up and go the other way because I want to actually attack the enemy ship. You know, you can do some cool Han Solo stuff. Like, I could fly through this asteroid if I wanted to. Uh, let's find a good hole to do that. Don't take that out of context, guys. Maneuverability is a little bit weird here, but... You know, if you've ever wanted to live out your... S space smuggling dreams, I suppose you can get a fraction of that experience here. Let's get back to killing some dudes. So our objective in this game type is actually, I believe, uh, I didn't get like a prompt when I joined, but based on my experience right now, is to destroy the enemy carrier, which is this thing right here. So the enemy carrier is split up into, well I shouldn't say split up, but it's defended by a number of modules that surround it. Uh, that include turrets. I should be able to get a kill here easily. Unless he's too fast and he's going to get away. Oh, I'm being hunted down myself. Man, is he ever fast. That was awful. So much for those shields I bought. Uh, what I should say, as I get out here with this ship, is uh, I'll take a look at our carrier and show you. There's turrets, basically, your towers, on top of your carrier here. So one thing you can do if you wanted to is like try to take out the turrets first and then just go in for the kill, because otherwise those turrets will tear you apart. But I've also seen a, a few guys that basically just took a bomber, which is that other class, that we have access to, and just basically dove in for the center, went in for the kill, and managed to get it after, you know, usually sacrificing their lives a few times. The bombers are, are heavily armored, and very good against the, uh, ancients, I mean, for lack of a better word, even though this isn't really MOBA, but really good against the objective, uh, but they are not that strong in just actual dogfighting themselves. So... Uh, usually they're they're really easy targets if you're a fighter to take down. Like, bombers beat carrier, carrier beats fighter, fighter beats bomber. If that makes any sense at all. Anyway, let's throttle all the way up here, in case I hadn't already. And we'll just basically get into some killing. So like I said, at the end of every match you earn in-game credits. Uh, but credits can only be used, at least as far as I know in my experience so far, I'll double check when we go back to the menu. Uh, can only be used to upgrade your ship. They can't be used to buy new ships. The only thing that can be used to buy new ships is this resource called Helium-3. And Helium-3 is kind of like one of the conceits of this game. It's like, everyone's on the lookout, we're all fighting for Helium-3 right now, because that's what drives the galaxy. Well, you know, that's like a subtle marketing ploy. You can buy Helium-3 yourself uh, with real, you know, hard-earned American dollars or whatever your denomination of choice is. Where did I, did I lose that guy? Why am I spinning out of control? I got my got my flaps all messed up here. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. So uh, helium three is the resource that you use in the game to basically buy every other upgrade. You know that isn't. Why am I so slow? Uh, every upgrade that isn't just like ship upgrades. If you want to buy new ships, you have to buy helium three, and the only way to get that is by using real money, which I think is kind of shitty. Like the free to play players have a substantial disadvantage in one respect because they only have access to two ships and the only way to get access to the other, what was it, like 16 ships in the game is by actually providing real money. So this, to me, seems like a fundamentally imbalanced uh, gameplay, or gameplay model, I should say, because probably 90% of the players are going to be using these free-to-play free classes and then there's going to be other classes, or I shouldn't say classes, but ships, uh, are going to be using these other ships that may indeed be better. And in case you're saying, well, maybe all the ships are balanced, so you're not missing out, everything's actually balanced, it's just that, um, you know, they have a greater variety of, of play styles to choose from, which is the argument, you know, in a lot of free-to-play games like this. We are going to town on these guys, I'm going to start firing some missiles in here. Um, but as I said, is the argument for a lot of these, uh, these free-to-play games, but there's another problem, which is that, uh, you know, using, this is weird controls here, uh, using your hard-earned, again, American dollars or denomination of choice, Looks like somebody's chasing this dude, so I'm just going to get behind this bomber now try to take him out. And then actually get behind both of these guys. Fire some turrets in here. Oh, did that... Ah, I came so close to actually landing. So you can use your hard-earned American dollars to also buy you boosts. So, like, right now I'm going to get, like, a very small amount of credits when this game ends. Probably between, like, 500 and 2,000, depending on my performance, which is pretty poor so far. Uh, but 
you can buy bonuses to basically multiply the amount of credits that you get after each match for a certain number of days. So for like a certain amount of Helium 3, you can get two times bonus for 30 days, or for a certain amount of uh, Helium 3 again, which equates to real life money, just lest you forget, uh, you can buy a bonus that will give you 15 times as many credits after each match for 30 days, which in my mind is just madness. To think that someone could get so much more in-game currency simply by basically like it's just 15 times as much in-game currency by becoming a paid player uh, which is crazy and remember that those credits are used to buy upgrades for your ship so for example I could have just put pumped real money into the game to get 15 times multiplier on my credits then played a number of uh, multiplayer games probably not that many I can't believe I died there uh, a number of multiplayer games, gotten enough credits and upgraded all of my ships to basically full power, or at least one ship to like level five upgrades across the board. So obviously, a free to pay, free to play player, and it's a surprisingly difficult phrase to say, is going to have a much more difficult time playing against these paid players because they can get the upgrades much more quickly and on more ships. So, you know, fundamentally, although I like the actual gameplay of this, I think it's a, at its core entirely unbalanced, and I think that's shitty, and I think that is going to keep me from playing more of this, what's, other, what's otherwise a, a fun game, despite the fact that it has, you know, surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly, but su despite the fact that it has uh, some kind of wonky controls, uh, otherwise I was having a fairly good time with it, but when I saw that, you know, you could increase you, the speed of your progress so fast just by pumping like $30 into the game, I was like, oh, that is, that is shitty and leaves a really bad taste in my mouth. Although I guess we won here, so that's good. But it just strikes me as that, like, Farmville model, right? And you'll notice that the, the credits are used to make you level up, so I'm almost level 4. In fact, I cross level 4. Uh, and this big buy boost button that wants you to pump in real money. But check out the level of other people in this lobby. You can tell very easily who's paid and who's not. Uh, because, like, the first time I started playing, there was, like, all level 1s, level 2s, and then each team had a guy that was, like, level 175, which is fucking crazy. Uh, but we'll check out the lobby here and see if we have a similar situation here. Or maybe that was just a one-off, you know? I'm trying to be fair to the game. Nope, there you go. So you got people 181, 91, 103, and then almost everybody else is like level, you know, 0 to 10, basically. I'm not going to quit out of this. Maybe we'll play one more game, but I don't know if you really need to see that much more of Moonbreakers, honestly, to form your opinion on it. You can play it yourself. It's free, right? Um, but yeah, it looks like that definitely holds true. So there is like a huge advantage here for paid players. And in case you think I'm just whining for no reason... Uh, or maybe I'm even incorrect. Check this out. So go to boosts. Uh, these are the boosts that boost your credits. So, look, I have zero Helium-3, and there's no way to exchange credits for Helium-3. The only way to get more Helium-3 is by buying them. So keep this number in mind. 5,000 Helium-3 for $25. Let's find something around 5,000 Helium-3. So here's 4,000 Helium-3. That'll give you 30 days of times 4 credits. Times 4! Quadruple! Quadruple the experience, basically, and resources. Uh, for an entire month, and that's 25 bucks. So it's not necessarily cheap, but it also does give you uh, an extraordinary leg up on on the average players. And this thing right here, 15 times boost for 30 days. Like, 15 times as many credits. How much would that cost? 8,000 helium-3, that's like, like 35, $33. That's insanity. And uh, watch as I go to the hangar here. Look at these ships. You want to unlock a ship? Uh, available only for 1,500 Helium-3. So these are all Helium-3 only. Helium-3, Helium-3. As you can see. And some of them cost a lot of Helium-3. Which makes me think that they are, you know, way better than your standard ships. Like, again, uh, what's this? 3,300 Helium-3? 3,300? That's like $15 to unlock this ship. That's craziness. Anyway, and again, remember that you can... Use your credits, which you will probably boost yourself in order to upgrade your ships to insane levels. And then there's this other fact that, you know, you got a region and a language, but I can't invite my friends. Like, when I was playing a game, I thought I would just send out an invite to see if anyone could get in. But uh, there was no option for it. It was just, like, invite to group, invite to trade. So I don't know if there's any, like, infrastructure built in here to invite your friends. So, uh, Moonbreakers... Uh, the gameplay is okay, but the free-to-play model is garbage and gives... You know, premium players, to put it nicely, uh, a very, very, very disproportionate advantage over free players, which, you know, basically ruined my enjoyment of the game. I'm not going to pump $30 into the game 
just to feel like I'm getting like my time's worth when I play it. And you know what? If I did, I wouldn't feel like I was skillful for killing these other players, because I would have these insane resource advantages. But I don't know, maybe some people are into it. The gameplay is not good enough for me to overcome uh, the issue uh, with the core unbalanced gameplay model. But maybe for some people who are really into space shooters, you know, it's free. You can give it a try yourself. Uh, I think the infrastructure is really weird that you can't invite your friends. Which is a shame. It's like, I think the gameplay is good. Good enough, anyway. Not horrible. But the, uh, the business side of it, everything but the gameplay, I really, really dislike. But as always, thank you guys for watching. You can check this out on Steam yourself if you so choose. And as always, I will see you next time.